Well today on Nation, if you want to crush your competition, make sure to stay tuned. We're going to show you how to do it, how to achieve greatness in your industry. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com and you are here. What's up? I'm glad that you're here. If it's your first time here, no, I am not that odd usually but thanks for having a look around hopefully you watch the episode or listen to it you like it and you want to listen or follow up on more i know a ton of you are binging right now catching up i'm getting emails and texts all the time being like yo i'm finally caught up absolutely awesome by the way high five to you people who have listened to every episode if you're on YouTube, tell me if you've listened to every episode. But we got over 200 episodes to listen to or watch. They're on YouTube, SoundCloud, anywhere uh, iTunes or uh, podcasts are. Hopefully, you like it. But either way, thank you very much for watching. And if you are one of the cool kids, that means you watch every episode or you try. And you give me the thumbs up on YouTube. And of course, you order from me, shameless plug, then thank you. It is because of you that I get to live this lavish sticker lifestyle things are good. Huh? But uh, no, if you want the old cool kid stickers right there, the new cool kid stickers right there, and you can't see it very well, but it's a hologram. So why not? If you want to put an order in, my number is 862-312-2026. It is an awesome limited edition sticker that I'm tempting you with to let me be your rep, which I, I wish I had better, more awesome things, but Get that. If you are one of the cool kids, but you want to be the epic cool kid, meaning you watch every episode, thumbs up, you've tried to watch every episode, you order from me because that's the awesome thing to do, and more importantly, or least importantly, or to make it an epic cool kid, you are subscribed to American Window Cleaner Magazine. By the way, if anybody wants to see, this is the uh, tattoo issue. This is the May issue that is going to be uh, coming out to people in the mailboxes like in a week. So there you go. It is there and uh, awesome. So go to AWC mag, that's AWC and uh, go shop around. Anyway, thank you very much for hanging out with me today. Like I said, we are talking uh, all about crushing your competition. Now, I'm also a big, big, big fan of being friends with your competition. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't ever wish anybody ill, um, ill, whatever. I don't wish them ill, right? If you have competition, it's much better to be friends with them. But let's be honest. We want to crush them, right? We want to be the company. We want to have the strongest, healthiest company we possibly can. If that means you being big, awesome. If that means you being still a one-man show but having every customer that you like and upping your hourly, awesome. But we want to crush it. And we want to crush the competition. We don't want somebody around us taking our customers, right? Now, I would never, ever, ever tell you to do something that's uh, shady against competition. That's stupid. If you're doing things like that, we're purposely trying to steal customers or whatever, shame on you. you got to, you're better than that, right? Go out there and uh, get stuff the right way. Uh, but there are some ways that could take your company and kind of differentiate from your um, competition. Now, if for any reason you think that your competition is not also trying to be the best company out there, you're wrong. They are, of course, trying to be the best company out there, as should you. So here's a couple uh, tips to help crush your competition. We're going to go over five. There's probably more. If you have things that you feel helped you be the best company in your area, Put them on YouTube. Search out this podcast, WCR Nation, uh, Five Ways to Crush Your Competition. Search it on YouTube and then comment. That's where we kind of have comments back and forth. By the way, thank you to all of you who uh, comment. Uh, Ryan Fuster with the thumbs up. And everybody else who just says what's up. It really, really does help kind of spread things. So thank you. Um, but the number five way that I would say that helped me kind of differentiate from my competition, help cr crush the competition is I was in more places. So be in more places. You're like, well, how do I do that? I'm a one-man show. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is I want to see your company everywhere I can. 
Now, I know we have limited marketing dollars, and I'm not saying go spend a billion dollars, but what I am saying is there's other ways to do it, right? There is Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace, and there is uh, job postings and um, um, grocery store boards, and there is EDDM, and there's postcards, there's newspaper, there's there's all of those things that you could be everywhere. Newspaper sucks, by the way. Don't go to newspaper. I rescind it. Don't do newspaper. But there's Little League teams. There is uh, sponsoring golf outings, right? Not golf cards, because they'll suck. Golf outings. Anywhere that you can get your uh, logo out there if it doesn't cost you too much money. I'm also a really, really big fan of donating every time I can. So anytime there's a silent auction coming up for a benefit or anything, I always will reach out and be like, hey, I would love to just give you a, a free window cleaning, inside and outside window cleaning, a house wash or whatever to donate. Because that means that your logo and your donation is going to be somewhere. Somebody will be talking about you. I have to say, of all the things that I say don't work, a lot of these things don't work that I'm talking about, but it gets your thing out there. So donating uh, shirts or sponsoring like a Little League team or a rec league, you'll never make the money back, but what you will is have your logo other places. This is that kind of theory about when somebody thinks of something, it becomes brand recognition, right? In the long run, you'll make more money and be a stronger company by being everywhere, but you're not going to directly make money off of one thing or the other. Simple concept is you have to send an EDDM, EDDM to somebody three times to get the best results. Same person, same card, three times in three weeks. You have to do it that way. It's the same thing with being just relevant in general. You have to basically be out as much and as common and as popular as you possibly can. You're not going to make money. You sponsor a little league team, what does it cost you? 350, 300 bucks? 250 bucks? I guess I haven't done that in a while, but you get the point. A couple hundred bucks, you get your logos on the back of the shirt or whatever, and all of a sudden now you're just one more place, right? Craigslist, you're every other day. Facebook Marketplace, you're all over, right? People are sharing your content. Maybe you got contests for sharing things, you're sharing things, and people are sharing things, and your posts are getting put all over. You are everywhere. So what happens is, in turn, when somebody goes to look for a window cleaning company, they instantly recognize, they don't know they're recognizing it, but they recognize your logo. They see it and they're like, oh man, Jersey's window cleaning that that's the one I know. I know that logo. Like they just feel comfortable there. Oh, that one. I've heard good things. They may never have heard about you, but they've seen it. They recognize it. Their brain says something's familiar about it, and it helps you gain trust right away, just by being more places. The big thing is you don't have to spend money to get your logo out there. Like I said, donations are awesome, right? If you're in an area that can do yard signs, yard signs are cheap if you're reusing them. If you are able to put logos and letters on your truck, do that. Be on, you know, everything you possibly can be so that it just becomes familiarity, even if it's in the subliminal, because a lot of people choose on things like that. That's why when you see certain colors, you know, like McDonald's colors, you can close your eyes right now and know what their colors are. Right? Superman's colors. You know what colors they are. Colors are very important just like logos are. Now, you may not ever get to the point where logo recognition people go, you know, from all over. I've never used you. Like, I know those guys. You can't just put your logo on something and be like, yeah. But what it does is when somebody's looking for those services, they instantly can recognize things. So make sure everything looks the same when you're putting your logos out there. Of course, you're not changing things, but be everywhere. Be more places than they are, and that will help you be awesomer. And I'm pretty sure awesomer is a word. That's the top. That's the number five thing to crush your competition. A number four, and this is the thing that I am telling you, without even knowing who you are listening. I know a lot of you, but I don't know you. I'm just speaking to you right now. Your follow-up game sucks now. Maybe you have amazing follow-up. It still sucks because it could be better. Everyone's follow-up game could be better. I'm talking about follow-up as 
uh, call list, spring, fall, email blast. I'm talking about four by six postcards randomly. I'm talking about sending birthday cards maybe. Sending treats after the fact. Maybe you send them a cookie afterwards like thanks again. Maybe you do a call to them the day after. Hey, Mrs. Jones, this is Jersey calling from XYZ. I just wanted to call and follow up on our service we did yesterday. How did everything turn out? Look great. Oh, it looked all oh, great. Well, I just want to let you know that we uh, haven't seen you on the schedule for the next time. Uh, you know, did you want to be on uh, in three months from now or did you want to wait uh, six months? Oh, well, let's wait six months, see how. Huh? Okay, great. Well, I have a date of this, blah, blah, blah. We'll get you in before it fills up. Listen, follow up is as important, if not more important, more, I'll say more important than any type of new advertising you can do. And the reason is they already trust you. They already trust you. They've already used you. They love you. They like you. And you don't want them going somewhere else. You know, if somebody's used you that they are interested in window cleaning services. When you send out a brochure or a postcard or a whatever, and you send it out randomly, you don't know if those people will ever be interested in your service. I am a homeowner and I am not interested in window cleaning. I'm just not. I have water fit stuff myself and right. So somebody, and I get stuff, you know, a bunch of times a year. Those people are gambling that I may even ever be interested in window cleaning. Your customers, you know that every single one of them, 100% of your customer list is interested in your service. They've trusted you because they've used you and they've gotten window cleaning. Make sure your follow-up game is strong. Now, there's always more things in follow-up that you can do that you're not doing. If you haven't done four by six postcards, it's like 60 cents to send one, right? When you get to a thousand people, maybe you send them out, you know, if you get a thousand customers, stay in relevant with them. When you talk to people who have lots of customers, Look at their overall close rate. A lot of times somebody goes, I got a thousand customers. How many people do you do a year? Ah, I do probably 500 of them. That's pretty bad. You get a thousand names of people who you know want your service, but you're not following up. You're not reminding them you exist. They may have found somebody else. They may go to your competition because your competition is killing it. You don't know. You have to stay relevant and you have to follow up. I had somebody one time say this, and it still sticks in my brain. But they said they don't do any follow-up. And they never call their customers, their existing customers. They never, ever do any of that because they don't want to bug them. Well, that is an incorrect way to think about it. That means that every single time you're relying on them to think about you, or you have to spend marketing dollars to try to acquire them again. The big thing is, is that in business, the only way that you will succeed to the level you want is to take control of what you do. Take control of your customers. Take control of when they book, right? I'm going to ask you, great, did you want to get in every three months or did you want to wait six months? I got an available appointment in July and I got another one available in December. Which one of those would work better for you? I'm going to, before we leave, our crew is going to get them booked on for the next time. I want to get a close rate, a pre-close rate so high that my marketing is only uh, attracting new people. And most people who call me are all new people or people who are just questioning getting things. A lot of times you're getting a lot of calls or just, hey, it's Mrs. Jones. I just want to schedule. Now you're going through all that. You could have already done that. And more importantly... Worst importantly, the worst thing about it is you're waiting for Mrs. Jones to remember you. That's why we do all this advertising. That's why we're like number five. We want to be everywhere because we want to remind people to use us. It's the same reason McDonald's puts billboards, television ads, and magazines, signs, logos. They're everywhere to remind you when you think you're hungry to go with them. You lose so much control on your business if you don't do that. And if you don't believe me, Think of this one thing. Let's just think about it right now. Your customers, think of last year. You're probably, if you're not into the numbers, you may not know your actual repeat year to year. If you are, comment on YouTube. But think about this. If every single customer of yours went every three months, what would your cust- what would your company look like? 
That means you're doing 400% of what you did last year if those people were all once a year. What if they went every two months or every six months, I'm sorry, twice a year, right? What if they even just for sure booked once a year? There's a lot of customers that we do their house every four or five years. Unless you're pushing the fact you want them to get booked. No, no, I'll wait. I'm going to send them postcards. If they don't rebook, I'm going to send postcards regularly to them. I need to stay relevant. Because guess what? If you're not relevant, they're going to find someone else. And guess who someone else is? Your competition. Your competition is now crushing you. Right? We all know that what we do is important to people. They like it. They trust us. Have them. Follow-up game has to be super strong. All of the money that you've spent on the R, on the cost of acquisition is already spent. You just need to get them back. Keep them back. Keep them happy and keep them going. If you get somebody booked regularly and everything, I mean, we're talking probably 75% uh, of our customers rebooked at the time of closing, you would have 25% of them to chase, right? Every year people move, every year people die, Every there's people you will lose every year, but if you could get that, and not on their dime, on your dime, you're filling the schedule the way you want, you're filling the slow months the way you want, you're doing all of that, you're taking control, it opens up every other marketing ap- avenue and opportunity to go for new people, if your follow-up game is strong, so that's number four, it should be number one, but that's for you. Uh, number three is you have to look cleaner, your gear has to be crispier and newer, Your trucks have to look nice. You have to bring it, right? If you show up in a beat up truck with rust holes and it leaks oil in their driveway, you smell like a cigarette, you're in their job, they're not going to really think about you the next time, right? They're just not going to think about you. Think of this. When you go to a restaurant, it's busy, right? Every restaurant is short staffed right now. Things suck. The food, eh, it's just not great. If you went to a restaurant one time, think of the restaurant that you love the most in your area. The last time you went there that it was bad, you would never have gone back again. You'd be like, yeah, that place sucks. I went there. But you know their food is good. If you give somebody a reason to not like you, they're going to like somebody else. If you give somebody a reason to not think that you are the only and best choice there is, they're going to find somebody else. Everybody in their lives is always expanding and getting better, right? If you have a vehicle right now and you think, ah, yeah, it's all right. Ah, Next time I think I'm going to get the the model with leather, right? You didn't get it with leather, so you're always thinking of something else, something better. If you got a vehicle that is the absolute loaded, we'll use a Jeep Gladiator for example, but you got every option you could possibly get on there, everything you want in a vehicle, the next vehicle, you're never thinking about getting rid of that one. You're not thinking about, oh yeah, it's nice, but next time I'm going to, you're not. You're like, I got it. That's my, that's my vehicle. That's the vehicle I want to drive. That's what my choice is. The option. I love that vehicle. They need to think the same thing about you, right? If you go to an ice cream place, you get ice cream and you got butter pecan, but you don't like it. By the way, sorry if I say it wisconsin if it's butter pecan, pecan, I don't know. Whatever. I'm in Charlotte now and they say things different than I do. That's all I know. Uh, But say you get that and you go, ah, yeah, nah. nah." I tried some of uh, my wife's ice cream and it was cookie dough. Ah, man, next time I got to get cookie dough. You're always going to be thinking of the better one. You're always going to be thinking of the cookie dough. You're not going to be thinking of the butter pecan ever, right? Because you know something's better. If you show up looking like a dumpster, people will always be looking for something better. Even if you're the cheapest, they're like, eh, maybe I'll spend a little bit more and the guy won't smell. I've gotten one of my largest accounts, and it was my largest account for probably six years of business. We ended up getting larger ones after that, but it was my largest account I had ever gotten in six months or six years of being in business. And I just happened to call. We talk about this all the time. I happened to call a bunch of cleaning companies. Hey, I'd love to sub work. Hey, I would love to throw my name in. I'd love to give you some information. Any projects you have? And I call the place, and they said, Oh my gosh, this is so weird. We literally paused our conversation about how much I don't like our window cleaners because they stink and we get so many complaints that, and you called. 
I said, really? They, they stink? Like, oh, man, they, they smoke like chimneys. They go in the project. Everybody in the office has to clear up because they smell like just dirty cigarettes, dirty water. They look gross. She's like, I know that the price is lower than anybody, but they're just disgusting, and it turns my customers off. I ended up bidding it and got it. It was the largest project at that time I had gotten, the largest project I had gotten in six years of being in business. And it was all because they smelled. It's nuts. If you really think about that, they lost tens and tens of thousands of dollars because the employees were gross. Are you leaving an awesome impression that they think, man, this guy showed up, crispy clothes, no stains, new equipment, everything looked awesome and fresh. He had the coolest, uh, and by the way, let me just say, whenever I talk about equipment, I don't want you to think, that is a shameless plug for that. The shameless plug was in the beginning when I said my number is 862-312-2026. Text me anytime. Let me be your guy, right? But new equipment. When somebody, I've seen window cleaners on the street. Their shirt is nice, right? No stains. It doesn't look gross. Their, their shorts are nice. Their shoes don't look like they smell. Their truck is nice. Even if it's not new, it's nice. Maybe there's logos or wraps or whatever. And then I've also seen other guys on the street where they show up and you're like, holy cow. That guy is homeless and he cleans windows, right? You've seen it. You know one is better than the other. And you know if you had the homeless guy, you'd always be looking for a better option. Don't let them think of a better option. Let them know you're the better option. Be clean. Um, again, if you're going to make your own water-fed system, I, I've been a window cleaner for like 15 plus years. I would never make my own window cleaning pure water system ever. I know a lot of you do. It's cool. But just make it not look like awful. Like if it looks like something that you put together with spare parts you found in the dumpster, it doesn't make any sense to have that system. People are visual as much as they are other senses, right? Make sure your equipment's crispy. If you got dirty equipment or broken equipment or just duct tape, buy new stuff, man. I know what you make an hour. You know what you make an hour. You can buy a new bucket, right? Anyway, uh, the number two thing, reason, way, whatever, to crush your competition is to have a marketing calendar. Now, I'm telling you right now, not having a marketing calendar is ruining your marketing. If we're all busy right now, we're not out there advertising. We're so busy we can't keep up, we're not going to remember to advertise. When do we advertise? When we're slow. If we advertise when it's slow, it does not yield anywhere close to when the iron is hot. If somebody's hungry, it's the best time to sell them a cheeseburger, right? So if you don't have a marketing calendar, I'm telling you, your other people probably don't. Now, all of a sudden, everybody's marketing at the same time, chasing the same people that don't exist. If you have a marketing calendar, you know you're always going to be doing something and it will always get done because you're going to follow that marketing calendar to the T. Now, the marketing calendar is going to be new customers and existing customers rock out on that follow-up, right? But you will always be advertising. If right now you are busier than you've ever been, now is the time to advertise. Strike while the iron is hot, I'm telling you. No one goes to the gas station to buy gum and gum alone. What they do is they're standing in line and they see gum and they get it. Put it in front of people when somebody wants it. That is window cleaning. You have to put it there when somebody actually wants it. That's what a marketing calendar does. All you're doing is laying out week one and this all starts when the light switch hits, right? You can move that all over, place it in the calendar. Week one, Monday, I send out EDDM. Tuesday, I do a Craigslist post and a Facebook post. Wednesday, I do a fill in the blank. Thursday is another Facebook Craigslist. You know, Friday, you fill in every single day of the week with something that will get done. Sales may be in that. Marketing, EDDM, door hangers, five ups. Uh, flyers, all those things are put in there. New bids maybe will be in that. And then you know every single week what the next week is. I know that the third week, I'm going to send out another EDDM. I know on the middle of, this is four weeks into it, I know I'm going to, like you can tell exactly where everything is. And if you go into work every single day, no matter how big, oh my gosh, we got such a big day today. You sit down at your desk, you're like, oh, it's going to be a big day. Uh, marketing calendar says this, let's do it and you do it first thing, it gets done, your marketing is always on point. This is the reason big companies have marketing departments. WCR, we have people whose only job is to market. 
to get you the uh, emails, to get you the contests, to get you all the stuff. The calendar's all put out there. We know exactly what day everything is happening, when it's happening. We know where the spots are we need to fill. We know where the spots are that were too heavy. Companies have marketing departments for that. They know what national advertising they're doing, what magazine, right? They know all that. You need to know all that too. Crush your competition. Get a marketing calendar. The number one best way to crush your competition, by the way, not any of these am I going to say clean windows better because that doesn't matter. It does not matter that your window is cleaner than the other because people assume you're going to be clean anyway. Don't do crap work, but don't focus on that. The number one way to crush your competition is to have a better experience. A better experience. A better experience is everything we talked about, but is the package and the experience of having you there. It's the way you talk to them and sign up their schedule, the way that you give them gift cards they can give to their friends. Maybe it's that you do your follow-up call the next day. Oh, they're so nice. Oh, I sent them a cookie or a brownie saying, hey, thanks again. All of those things is the reason that a company does better than the other ones. If you create such a great experience, flawless, people remember that. People buy cars because of an experience. People buy uh, anything Apple because of an experience. People buy Amazon because it's an experience. You get boxes that just say Amazon. You're like, oh man, what's in what box? I'm going to open it up. You open it up. There's bubble wrap. You can pop the bubbles. I'll get the experience of your service is more important than your service. Window cleaning is not live or die. It is not oncology or something, cancer medicine, by the way. You don't need it to live. It's a luxury. And a lot of people don't get it because it's out of their budget. It's out of their realm. It's not in their luxury. They'll do it themselves. And that's totally cool. But like anything else luxury, the experience is amazing. Let's go back to cars again. If you ever watch those, why is it so expensive on YouTube? Very awesome show, but they'll show why is a Rolls Royce Phantom so expensive? I'm going to throw out a number and I might be wrong. Like $500,000 car? I don't know. It is the most luxurious car that is production that, that they make. That's why people buy it. Because when you go to Rolls Royce, they bring you in. A guy in a tuxedo sits you down. There's somebody playing the piano and hands you champagne. You pick out everything because that car is your car. What color do you want? What finish do you want? Do you want your initials anywhere? We put this, this, this. There's umbrellas in the door. The, the, the stitching is hand sewn. Come through our factory. Look at this. Put these white gloves on. The experience of buying the car is why you'll buy another one of those cars. Once you have the car, the car does all the work. It's awesome. Once you have clean windows, people go, wow, these windows are super clean. That was great. But the experience is what gets them to come back. The experience is what gets them to buy from you again or not. It's what gets them to the competition or not. The experience you create is more important than what you do. It's more important than cleaning the windows. It's more important than wash housing. It's more important than washing a house. I'm just going to stutter a couple times. I don't edit unless I sneeze. So, you know, there you go. Take it. It's more important than all of that. Now, I'm not saying you can do crappy work, but if you wash a house and it's pretty good compared to perfect, but your experience was absolutely amazing, you sent them stuff to remind you, you're, you know, everything was spot on. These guys were so nice. I'm telling you right now, people are not focused on the service as much as they were focused on the experience. What they're buying is the experience, not the service. Remember that. Again, let's go over the five again. Five ways to crush your competition. Be more places. Follow up. It's cleaner. Have cleaner gear, newer gear, trucks, cleaner look. Marketing calendar has to be on point. And finally, have a better experience. It's the only way these companies exist. If you've been in a luxury brand for anything, it is amazing. Buy an iPhone. Buy an anything. Man, it just it's the idea of buying something. If you get something and it's just like thrown in a box, you're like, mm, that's garbage. But if you get something that's like super packed, everything's custom, you're like, man, yeah, buddy, right? 
be better. Always try to crush your competition, but more importantly, be friends with them because it's super valuable. But here's my shameless plug again. If you haven't bought from me yet, please, please do. I hope you get some information from the stuff that I'm giving. At least in 200 episodes, maybe you've gotten one little nugget of information. If you have an awesome way to high five and virtually give me a bro hug is to let me put your order in at windowcleaner.com. Now, uh, it doesn't cost you any extra. Uh, I get credit for it, and it's easy. All you got to do is text me at 862-312-2026. Just text me and be like, yo, I got an order in my cart. And I would love nothing more than to put it in for you. So give me a call. Text me. If you haven't yet, go out and go to awcmag.com. Get a window cleaning magazine. This is the whole... Zeros in the back. But the whole magazine is all window cleaning. Articles, pictures. It's, It's awesome. Be immersed. It is part of the culture. The other thing with the magazine, of course, you get the sticker sheet in every episode, in every issue. So do that. Anyway, go out there. Uh... Crush your competition, but more importantly, be epic.